Back in May and May 31st of 2023, I shot this image about three hours per night. As you can see, there's a pretty terrible gradient in it. There was a 77% full moon one night and just below that on the second night. I was using a ZWO dual band filter in the image train and I wanted to emphasize the H alpha, the nebula structures in Boat's Galaxy on the left. On the right, I also wanted to emphasize the H alpha on all the nebulous gases in the Cigar Galaxy. It worked, but there's still the gradient. Now, I live in a very rural area of the Canadian backwoods and it's border 1.5 or thereabouts around here. And I never really have to deal with the gradients of urban lights, but the moon creates a problem from time to time. Anyway, I tried to suppress this gradient repeatedly with the use of tools such as Graxpert and various background and gradient suppression tools and techniques from PixInsight. And to be honest, I wasn't happy with any of the outcomes. PixInsight's tools were complex and didn't yield satisfactory results, and Graxpert with its new AI was much simpler to apply, but, but no matter what I did, it degraded the final results and I just wasn't happy with them either. So I began experimenting with an affinity photo and by applying the power of layers and compositing, I quickly came up with what I honestly believe is a much better way to suppress a gradient. Let's jump right into it. The technique is remarkably fast and simple and very effective. Now, as I said in just about all my videos on editing astrophoto images, you're going to have a lot more power if you use a tool like PixInsight to do your initial image development, which is to say stacking, histogram stretching, initial curves transformation, and if necessary, image integration, rotation and alignment, and mosaic creation. Though you can often accomplish those latter three just as well, or even better by working in a layer-based photo editor. So here, I've already developed the data from May 30th and May 31st, and integrated the two masters together in PixInsight using the rotation and alignment and then image integration tools. Then I ran Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, and Star Exterminator, stretched the histogram on the resulting star plates and the starless plate of the galaxies, saved the resulting files as TIFFs, and then opened those TIFFs in Affinity Photo. You can see those images in the right now as layers. In the layer screen, middle right, we have a layer called Background, this is the image of the boats and cigar galaxies with the stars removed. The background at the very bottom is locked and it will be duplicated and made invisible. And that's pretty standard practice when working with a layer-based photo editor like Affinity Photo. It serves as a proof layer in case you make a mistake that you're having difficulty undoing. You can always just delete the problem and then duplicate the background layer and have a new fresh proof with which to work. Let's move on. The top layer is called New Extracted Stars. This is just our star plate from the Boats and Cigar Galaxies. The stars were removed while still operating in PixInsight using RC Astro's Star Exterminator. Let's take a moment to take a look at how bad this gradient is. You can see that roughly half the image going in a diagonal from a little to the right of the top left to a little of the left of the lower right is divided into a very distinct gradient. On the left side, it's reddish and on the right side, it's greenish. So how do we get rid of this? We're going to need a black plate, by which I mean just pop into a tool like Affinity Photo, create a canvas of any size. I usually use a typical 4K canvas and apply true black, all colors zero to it. In Affinity Photo, we can make a black plate by going into the Files option, selecting New, and creating our canvas. On the top right, selecting the Color tab, place your mouse cursor over it, and drag everything down to the bottom left, which sets all color channels at zero, which is true black. Then go over to the left and select the Paint Bucket icon, which is the Fill Paint icon, and then click on your canvas, and that'll instantly paint the entire canvas black. Now all we have to do is go back to the image we were working on and open the file explorer to wherever you have saved your black plate and drag it into the image. Now it's a layer. You can see it here in our layer box on the middle right. We're going to set the black layer below the star layer, but above our background layer, in this case, the boats and cigar galaxies. Now I've made the star layer invisible and made the black layer visible above the background layer so we can see it. And at this point, you're probably thinking this process is nuts. How does this help? A visible black layer blocks out the lower layer with the galaxies, so you can't see them at all. And here is the point where the magic happens. The magic of layer-based compositing. 
With the black layer selected, go middle right and select the compositing options and go down to the reflect option. This is like telling the light from the layer below, which is our layer or image with the galaxies on it. It's like telling that light to reflect back up to the black layer. The galaxies being brighter reflect clearly. The gradient being dimmer averages out and is almost entirely suppressed. And look at that, like magic, almost the entire gradient is poof, it's gone. But you know what? By adding a couple tools to the background layer, we can improve this effect. Notice in the layers panel, middle right, I already have two tools in the background layer. They're just invisible right now, so you can't see their effect. One is the shadows and highlights adjustment tool, and the other is the luminosity mask tool. The shadows and highlights tool allows us to easily drag down the darkest regions of the image. It's a lot like going to the curves tool onto the masters channel and dragging down the bottom left side of the light curve. I'm going to open the Shadows and Highlights tool and drag the Shadow Suppression all the way to 100%. That'll crush the darkest blacks, further suppressing our gradient. That looks really good. At this point, our gradient is almost entirely gone, and by briefly making the Shadows Highlights tool invisible, we can see how much of a difference it made. But we can do even better by now turning to our Luminance Mask tool. This is fundamentally a brightness pass filter. Luminosity must be of a certain brightness, or it cannot pass the filter. With the filter in the background, so it only affects the background galaxies without affecting the stars, we'll drag down the lower left side, which restricts the passage of dim light and we'll simply slowly and carefully drag it down until we have suppressed a satisfactory amount of that gradient without suppressing the light from the galaxies. Now let's turn the stars back on and see what it looks like. And how is that for gradient suppression? After my gradient was fully suppressed, I added a curse transformation tool and slightly elevated the upper side of the red channel to enhance the reds of the H-alpha region and then added an unsharp mask to the background layer to sharpen the detail portrayed in the galaxies. And our final image, which started looking like this, is transformed into this, with almost magical and nearly complete suppression of the background gradient. This is the power of layer-based astro-image developing. And in every way that I have experimented with it to this date, I find that it excels. And we don't have to stop here. There are many other ways in which we could improve this image, such as further amplifying the visibility of the gases exploding from the core of the cigar galaxy, or by reviewing the process by which I further tighten the stars even though this image is much zoomed in. But those are advanced topics, and that, my friends, is material for yet another video. As always, thank you for watching, and if you try this method, leave a comment, let me know how it goes. Now get out there and shoot the sky.